does your vote matter? Will it make a difference? Or in other words, does your vote have value? In this video, we'll explore two opposing views on this topic. First, let's take a look at the view of Stephen Levitt, a professor of economics and co-author of the highly influential book, Freakonomics. Levitt states, never should anyone delude themselves into thinking that the vote they cast will ever decide an election. Just about anything you do with your time will be more productive. So since it is extremely rare that an individual vote will make a difference in an election, your vote has very little value. This doesn't mean you should not vote, but rather, if you do, you should have other reasons for valuing it. Going back to Levitt, he states that the reasons for voting have to be something very different. It's fun. Your wife will love you more if you do it. It makes you feel like a proud American. Since it's so unlikely for your vote to actually change anything, you should only do it if you enjoy it. Maybe you enjoy posting a selfie with the free sticker, or you get value out of the conversations it provides your friends. If those type of reasons apply to you, then voting has instrumental value to you. So go ahead and do it. But if those types of reasons don't apply to you, well, then do something else with your time. So that's view one. Since your vote is extremely unlikely to make a difference, only spend your time casting it if it offers you some other type of value. Will McCaskill, a philosophy professor at the University of Oxford, offers an opposing view to this. In his book, Doing Good Better, McCaskill claims that voting is often an extremely high value activity. Ironically enough, a quote by Levitt praising this book is prominently showcased on the cover. You can find a link to this book in the video description. According to McCaskill, there are two primary errors in Levitt's assessment of voting. The first error is dismissing low probability events altogether. McCaskill does admit that your vote is very unlikely to make a difference, but just because something is very unlikely doesn't mean we should not consider it as valuable. Let's take a look at the odds of your vote making a difference. McCaskill points to a 2012 study in which calculates the odds of the average voter affecting the outcome of a presidential election as only 1 in 60 million. To put this in context, you're over five times as likely to be struck by lightning, not just once, but twice. So if he agrees that your vote is extremely unlikely to make a difference, why? would your vote have value? Well, a small probability is still greater than zero probability. So some events that are very unlikely, but still have a high impact if they do occur, are still worth taking seriously. For example, a catastrophic meteor impact. Very unlikely, but still something we should look out for. But how do we assess the value of an event when outcomes are so uncertain? McCaskill's answer to this is expected value. The formal mathematical representation of expected value can look complicated, but the concept is actually pretty straightforward. Expected value is the amount one stands to gain or lose combined with the chances of that gain or loss. The higher the expected value, the better. For example, uh, imagine your friends offer you the following bet. Rolling a six-sided die, if you roll a six, he will give you $500. But if you roll anything else, you only lose just $1. So even though you're likely to lose five out of six times, this is clearly a very good bet for you. So how do we apply the concept of expected value to voting? Well, we already have the odds of making a difference, one in 60 million, but what is the value of that outcome? To do this, you must estimate the difference your preferred candidate will make if elected compared to the alternative. McCaskill suggests using a modest estimate of a $1,000 average improvement per person, compared to the 14 plus trillion spent by the US federal government over a presidential's four year term. However, if we plug in this $1,000 number that we expect to gain ourselves into the expected value calculation, we end up with an expected value of a fraction of a penny, very low value for your action. So perhaps Levitt was right. Voting is a very low value activity. 
However, calculating an expected value in such a fashion would commit the second error, only considering the gain to yourself. Making decisions based only on how they affect you is what's called ethical egoism. Most ethicists, including McCaskill and myself, reject this point of view. A primary component to ethics is considering how your actions affect others, not just yourself. So instead of including the value for just yourself, you should include the potential gain for everyone in a nation of over 300 million people. Doing the expected value calculation in this way, assuming an average of $1,000 benefit per person, results in an expected value of a whopping $5,000, much higher than our roll of the die example previously. This is the sense in which McCaskill claims that voting is often an expected high impact altruistic activity. In other words, voting is very valuable. Assuming that you are concerned with the well being of others, instead of trading your time that it takes you to vote for an expected value of less than a penny, you are trading your time for an expected value of thousands of dollars. So, thinking in terms of expected value, your single vote. It's one of the most valuable actions you can take with your time. Now, there are some caveats to this view. McCaskill presents two in his book. First is that the odds of your vote making a difference in a presidential election varies on where you live. The one in 60 million odds is just an average. If you're voting in a safe state, the odds are much lower, resulting in a lower expected value. For example, he calculates the expected value of voting in Massachusetts, a solidly blue state, as only around $300. The same idea applies to solidly red states as well. However, if you're voting in a swing state, you are far more likely to make a difference. An expected value is much higher, like $300,000 or more. The second caveat is that the estimated gain will vary depending on how much better your preferred candidate will be compared to the alternative. So that $1,000 estimate, well, that's just an estimate. That number will change depending on your assessment of the candidates. You should consider how better off people overall will be with your preferred candidate over another. Even if that candidate is not your ideal choice, you still want to see, well, what's the difference between the two? As such, these estimates will vary widely, but he suggests that you should still make your own estimates and run the expected value calculation for yourself to help inform your own decision of the value of your vote. McCaskill concludes, only if you think the expected value of one party over another is very small, perhaps $20 of benefit per person, will you conclude that voting isn't a reasonable altruistic activity. Now, I'd like to add a couple other caveats of my own. First is that McCaskill's analysis only includes the value to the population of the United States. But we should also take into account the impacts on people outside of our country, as our choice and president will, to some extent, affect the lives of people globally. This will, perhaps, raise the expected value of voting much higher. My second caveat asks, well, what about third parties? McCaskill's analysis only assumes two options, the Republican candidate or the Democrat candidate for president. This is because the odds are so low that a third party candidate will win the presidency that the expected value of your vote for a third party candidate will be always less than a penny. Still, this leads us to the general caveat that the likelihood of your vote making a difference will change each election, depending on how likely your preferred candidate is to win which can also apply to red and blue candidates. Overall, I agree with McCaskill's assessment. A well-researched vote for the right candidate is valuable. Your overall ballot is extremely valuable when you take into account the expected value of many other things you will be voting on, many of which have a much higher probability of your vote making a difference, such as state and local issues. Levitt's view, however, still might be applicable to votes for candidates or issues that are extremely unlikely to win. That's my take, but what do you think on this topic? Let me know in the comments. On a final note, an important point to end on is that this assessment of voting only takes into account value based upon potential consequences of your vote. 
But there might be non-consequentialist reasons, I'm looking at you, Immanuel Kant, uh, for voting or not voting that should also be addressed. But that's a topic for another video. If you think the expected value of watching this video is high, consider sharing it. Hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and perhaps hit the bell icon to get notifications of new videos.